So good news, the Decia Santero is here. Yes. A uh, long time ago on Top Gear, actually, it was the first time I heard of it, was uh, James May was making a laugh at, for one series. He was, you know, saying, you know, good news, Decia Santero is coming to the UK. Well, now it's in Ireland, okay? It's out. Uh, Decia, Dacia, whatever you call it, I think the UK ad calls it something different again. Um, I call it Dacia, it just reads that way, it's spelled that way, but uh, Irish Dacia uh, tends to call it Dacia. I don't know who's right. But I don't care, because it all amounts to the same thing. It's the Sandero. It's a little five-door hatchback car. It's not even that little. It's actually quite big in here. Um, And it's built to be, basically, a very, very cheap car. I don't think anyone's going to mind me saying the word cheap, either. Uh, Because it starts off at 9,990 plus 600 euro delivery. So whatever model you get, add 600 quid to the price you see on the on the book because it's 600 euro for delivery. Now basically what I mean is an old Renault Clio, uh, which is not a bad thing. It's actually, Renault Clio is a pretty good car. This is, this is basically the same thing. The chassis, the engines, the gearbox, the steering, even some of the visual stuff I'm looking at around me, like the remote controls for the radio. They're all straight out of the Renault uh, parts bin. That isn't a bad thing, because Renault actually do some good cars, and the new Clio, and the old Clio, they were all pretty decent little cars. Now, where does Dacia, Dacia, do, 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 fit into it? Well, they're actually a Romanian company, bought out by Renault, not so long ago. Um, and so they've become this twin thing. And if, you, if you're ever overseas anywhere in Europe, you will see quite a number of dusters around the road, uh, which I reviewed last year new video of that to come i think um and it's actually a pretty good car i mean it's a it's good value for money you can't debate on the value for money front of it because uh it's got everything uh, and it's four-wheel drive it's just mad now this sandero is a five-door hatch and it looks pretty on the outside i have to say i think it looks all right little bland in places but you know what I'm only paying 9990 plus delivery um, and it has everything this one is a top spec one now the top spec one comes loaded which if you look at an options list on a normal car they've just ticked every one of those boxes right so I have cruise control I have remote controls for the steering I have Bluetooth, I have a touchscreen radio with sat-nav, um, I have uh, a full control of my phone, I can play radio or sorry, music from my phone by Bluetooth, I have air conditioning, I have electric windows all around, all of the switches are in a stupid place, they're down here, um, they're not near the door where they should be. Um, I have airbags, I have traction control, I have uh, ABS, I have, well, everything, everything. What more would you want? And really, there isn't many other options you could ever want in the car. There's three flavors of engines. Uh, there is a 90 brake horsepower 900cc unit comes out of Renault, and it's a new one. I've driven it in a Clio, and it's pretty good. I haven't driven it in this. There is the one that I'm driving, which is a 1.2 liter petrol. The engine is as old as the hills and will be reliable as a grandfather clock, although it doesn't sound as refined as some of the more modern stuff. And then there's the 1.5 DCI engine that you find in basically everything, which is the uh, everything Renault, everything Nissan, including the Qashqai, and including that yoke, the Tida, comes with a 1.5 DCI engine as well. So, um, there's no denying the value for money. There are some flaws in the car, but you know what? You need a sticker across here to say, I paid 10 grand for this car. Uh, some of the little flaws that I find are I don't like where the electric windows are okay I think electric window switches should be here here all four of them right there here I have two and then I have two back here as well which is a bit silly um, there are some screw heads that you can see about the car as well there is simple things like missing the vanity mirror cover off that mirror which means I'm looking at my crotch while I'm driving along with the wing mirror down um, there is electric mirrors there is a, a decent sized boot, although the boot cover, when you're closing the boot lid, the, the locking mechanism catches your wrist. 
because the handle is perfectly lined up with the boot mechanism. So there are some little issues, but those issues are very quickly outweighed when you think about the value for money. Because you can tick every single option in this box and still pay less than 15 grand for everything. Diesel. Now, diesel probably won't be the seller in this. The chances are the seller is going to be the 1.2 petrol or the 90 brake horsepower 900cc unit. Now, I've gotten brilliant fuel economy out of this petrol one, uh, 1.2 petrol. I've been all over the country. I've even been to the airport a couple of times this, this week, um, international trips and all, and I still have 330 kilometers left in the tank. I've done 454 kilometers, 0.8, and I've half a tank, really. It's an electronic dashboard, I'm not keen on them either. Um, it's zero degrees outside, seemingly. It tells me everything. Like I said, it's a triple computer, this. Uh, I'm still clicking through all the things. I've used 30.5 litres of fuel, and an average of 6.7 litres per 100 kilometres. And I'm currently using 8.9, but I'm accelerating here to go along. Now, the dash in this one is is in uh, miles per hour, so you won't get that in Ireland. This is just a kind of pre-production one. This is the ones that I get, which would be the very first ones in the country. Um, you know, they're not dickied up or nice up for you guys. You'll get ones with kilometers per hour on the dashboard, so don't, I wouldn't worry about that. Kilometers are there, I can see they're the small ones. The miles per hour is the big one. Um, it actually has a little bit of road presence as well. It's, it's a decent, decent little offering of a car. Now, one thing we haven't done in this country is bring in that idiotic version that Dacia UK have brought in where you have to buy or pay extra for a radio. Seriously? You want to be the cheapest car in the UK when you don't have a radio in the car. That's just deception. That's what that is. And Dacia UK deserve a kick in the head when it comes to that. Um, that's just silly, right? Silly. No one buys a car like that. And you can stick the ad in the paper all you want say, UK is cheapest model of car. Blah, 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 blah. You don't have a bloody radio in it. Cop on. We didn't bring that in here in Ireland, okay? So even our bottom spec one comes with a load of kit, okay? Uh, it's loaded up to the hill. So our, even our cheapest, cheapest, cheapest chips one, the one that's under 10 grand or thereabouts, um, comes with everything. So don't worry about it. We didn't, our Dacia is cleverer than the Dacia UK. Uh, but it still makes one of Ireland's cheapest cars. That said, you have a three-year warranty out of the box. You can buy a five-year warranty. It's at a little extra cost, not much in a couple hundred euro. Um, and Dacia have actually been voted Europe's most reliable brand. I don't know by who. That's what they say. Marketing speak. Um, I wouldn't doubt it, to be honest with you. It's perfect. Right on the, When I picked this up, when I picked this car up, it had 20 kilometers on it. Okay? <laughs> um, that's all it had, because I had to take some photographs of it and do some video of it. So I took it, and I ended up going on international trip, going to the airport, uh, you know, silly o'clock in the morning and flying about in this little car and I, I it's a humdinger of a little thing particularly with the cruise control and everything on it's great, you know, you get all the little bits and pieces I like it it's got a certain charm to it there's a charm to it It's, but it is what it is you know, it's always going to be kind of I suppose a, a tool to get you from A to B, it's never going to really excite you or you know, it's not going to be brilliant down a back road or it's not going to be excellent on a motorway. It's not going to do one particular job very well for you. It's just going to be a decent car. And when I say a decent car, I really do mean that. It's a decent little offer. There's plenty of space in here. It'll suit towns and cities perfectly well. That 90 brake horsepower engine, it's only 900cc. It's a humdinger of I drove that on the, on the Clio International launch. Um, and it was a dead little engine, really, really good. This 1.2, as I say, is a really old engine. It's been around for years, it won't go wrong, it never has gone wrong. The 1.5 DCI is gonna be the very same. So, you know, head into a Renault dealer and have a look. 
they're all claiming to be the fastest growing brand in Ireland. Everybody is sad. Dacia, you know, they're Hyundai, they're all at it. Um, but Hyundai is actually, or uh, sorry, Dacia is actually expanding their dealer network pretty quick too, as more Renault dealers take on the Dacia brand. <laughs>